Right then, in what is the longest, most drawn out transfer of the summer, and hopefully the longest drawn out transfer that we're going to have for a while, Sofian Amrabat is about to become a Manchester United player. And while it's on loan initially, it does appear like it's going to be a long term thing for United as well. Now, the details of the deal it's a 10 million euro loan fee. That's going to cover him till summer 2024, of which Manchester United have then got an obligation for 20 plus 5 million in add-ons if we do want him to stick around long term. Now, I'm loving that. I am loving that. He's on his way to Manchester shortly. He has rejected every single club in Europe, including the likes of Fulham, which is an absolute madness. Um, um, yeah, I, we're, we're driving. I mean, I'm not driving. Janine's driving. We are driving home at the moment, so this is a truly on-the-fly reaction that you get into Amrabat. Now, I think it's really important that we look at what Sophie and Amrabat's going to bring to Manchester United and why he's been so desperately needed. And it was always the case that we needed to bring in someone of this profile alongside a Mason Mount. Now, Mason Mount has got a ton of different uh, characteristics that I still think are going to make him a really good Manchester United player, but... What Amrabat can do in terms of being just that little bit more defensively minded, which isn't even his primary attribute actually, but him being that little bit more defensively minded, I think he's going to be an absolutely massive thing for us. Now, I th I don't think we've quite got the blend right yet, and obviously none of our forwards have scored, so we're clearly not getting the attacking blend right either. Um, there's too many players in the team that aren't cooking at the moment and too many players in the team that haven't hit the ground running at the start of this season. And that might be the case with Amrabat as well, considering that he's uh, not trained and he's also trained on his own at various times as well in pre-season. So he might take a minute to get up to speed. I doubt he'll be available for Arsenal. I'm pretty sure it's a 48-hour thing, so... I don't know, maybe this time. I, I, it doesn't feel like this time, though, to be honest with you. Um... I think with what he's going to bring to Manchester United, though, is a level of progression, which is really interesting because I saw some people on Twitter yesterday saying, well, it's not like he's going to progress the ball, is it? The guy is in the 99th percentile, which means he's in the top 1% of people, essentially in world football, because it's the top five leagues in Europe, which are the top five leagues. He's essentially in the top 1% of footballers in world football at progressing the ball. That's literally what he does literally what he does now yes we saw a player um in the world cup that's capable of doing a little bit of the dirty side of stuff as well i think what you're going to get out of amrabat is a player that's going to play alongside casemiro probably a, a, quite a bit at first as well as united shore up and then start attacking uh, and i like the idea of what he's going to bring to united um for a long time i mean we did a whole video on what what he's going to do, why we've got him, or why we want him, how he's going to fit in, and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, progression is one, tenacity is another. There's a level of quality about him um, that I think United have really needed. Now, people are like, well, what was the point in signing Mason Mount? A different position. And I still think there's a desire from Ten Hag to play with Bruno and Mount, but not necessarily in the setup that we've seen so far. And I would I, I would be comfortable saying it hasn't worked with, with Bruno and Mount so far. Now, maybe that is because we haven't quite seen exactly how that's going to set up. That's, that's a potential factor for sure. But maybe it's also because we haven't seen um, those two players performing well. I mean, Bruno's still creating chances. That's obviously a positive. Mount's been creating, but it's not been to the same sort of level as, as Bruno has. And I think that he's just an easy scapegoat, certainly for opposition fans, but even some of the impatient Manchester United fans as well have just been like, ugh, waste of money. And on one hand, I think that there's... There's an element of truth to this in terms of, like, for how much Amrabat would have cost us if we'd have bought him outright, and someone like a Tadebo or a Pavard... You could have got both of them for the price amount. You could have also got a cheaper striker as well. I think Porto was ready to let Teremi go for like 15 million euros. It's weird that United, even though we know these players would be good for us, we don't seem to ever do the shopping um, in the right sort of areas to get players on these sort of cheap deals. Why are Manchester United having to loan players in 2023? You know, how have we spent 
as people like to remind us all the time, over a billion on players in the last 10 years and are still scratching around. And I'm still disappointed at the um, the way that we're, we're dealing with what's going on with, um, what's it called? Alvaro Fernandez, sorry, mine went blank. You know, this is the opportune moment for a youngster. No, no youngsters really, Greenwood aside, and that didn't really end well. There's no youngsters really have a really sort of managed existence into the first team. It's always in place of somebody else. It's always because someone else got injured, suspended, their form fell off a cliff. Youngsters have to force their way into the first team. They don't really get planned movement to the first team. They have to steal that place. And the perfect opportunity for Alvaro Fernandez, who's gone and done it in the championship. This isn't a youngster that we have no idea, oh, is he going to be able to play men's football? That's not the case. We've just seen a youngster go and abs player of the season in the championship for Preston. Not an easy place to go. Not exactly getting, you know, not exactly the team that's the cock of the walk when it comes to the championship. You're seeing a player there that's gone and done it in a very, very tough league. Okay, championship is not the Premier League. But when you see players go and do bits in the championship, it invariably leads. Look, people was like, "Oh, Jude Bellingham, yeah, he's a teenager, this, that, and the other, and he's all right. He's done it for for Birmingham in the championship. So what? The championship is no joke. If you can play football in the championship, you can play football. That's it. Top and bottom, done. Finito. And yet we've got this kid here that we seemingly don't want to give the opportunity to. That doesn't sit right with me. Now, whether that's external pressure that we actually need to maybe raise some funds to sell him, um, or Ten Hag's just not having him, I really don't agree. I, I think Alvaro Fernandez should have been given the opportunity. Now, it sounded like United were caught sort of unawares by what went on with Mason Greenwood, um, who is still on, still at the football club, by the way. I don't think people actually know this. Mason's not had his contract cancelled because of the legal ramifications, I assume, in, of having his contract cancelled. United are going to help him move somewhere else. All that their statement said was he won't play for United again. So all that means is they're going to move him somewhere else. It doesn't mean necessarily that they cancelled his contract so he can just go and sign for someone. He's still a Manchester United player. So the, the smart money is on him going to Turkey uh, within the next couple of weeks. I think they've got another fortnight to be able to bring somebody in on loan. That's where the smart money is for him going in. But it seems like United were caught unawares of that. It seems like United's planning was that they were going to have Mason Greenwood as part of the first-team squad. And clearly, you've not got Mason Greenwood as part of the first-team squad. So we're still lightweight up front. Like, we've, we've actually recruited quite a lot of players this summer, and we're still miles off having, like, a full team. Absolute carnage. That absolute, absolute carnage. All right, I imagine Amrabat's going to be the last one today um, and therefore that means that's the last one for this window so uh, let's hope it's enough with the injuries that we've got I'm not sure it will be let me know your thoughts I'm buzzing about whether this comes across as me being buzzing about Amrabat coming in or not maybe it's just me venting a little bit about some of the other issues that we've got at the club but Amrabat's a great player and he clearly wants to play for United that's a massive massive positive and I'm very happy about that so let's see how he does once he gets that red shirt on See you in a bit.